Okay, let's get back to the slideshow and wrap this guy up. So now that we've kind of gone through the basics of creating layers and repositioning them and kind of the non-fun stuff with layers, there are some things that we could do to kind of spice up our Photoshop. Um, we don't know a lot of Photoshop editing at this point in the semester, but we can start to play around with images and create cool effects. And three of the ways that you can do that are layer opacities, layer blending modes, and um, which we'll talk about in the next video, layer effects. And so the first two I want to talk about are layer opacities and layer blending modes. You can make layers interact with one another by adjusting these two things. The difference between layer opacity and layer blending modes, even though sometimes they look the same, layer opacity adjusts the layer, making it more or less transparent or more or less see-through. And so if you lower the opacity, you will see through one layer beneath that layer to the next layer. And then if that layer has opacity, you might see through that layer to the one beneath that. Um, but a lot of times when you use layer opacity, it almost makes the image look washed out and like there's color missing from the picture. Layer blending modes affect the way that one layer blends with the layer beneath it. And so if you change the layer blending mode to the top layer in the layers panel, it will blend in some way with the layer beneath it. And um, different images react different ways and different blending modes react different ways. And so I wanna show you some basics of this, but we will talk about it in greater detail, um, especially layer blending modes later in the semester. I think that they're a really easy way to create some cool effects without knowing much Photoshop. And so in this example here, I have the, the image that we've been working with, it's the cone, I don't have the, the pink background, but you can kind of see on the left hand side that I have the cone, I've applied some weird filter to it, it's, it's called posterization, um, and the opacity set to 100%. But if I were to slide that opacity slider on the layers panel to the left, it would decrease and it starts to blend back with the original image. And so um, I can blend the two together and so the the effect that I'm getting isn't as harsh. It kind of blends the changed layer, which is the ice cream cone layer, with the original layer, and it lessens the severity of the posterization that I applied to that image. Layer blending modes affect the way that the image blends beneath it. And so if you look closely on my slideshow here, I started over with the ice cream cone image and I didn't make any other layers um, from selections or I don't have a pink squiggly background. But what I do have is I've duplicated the background and made a background copy. And that doesn't do anything if you're just looking at the picture. But if you change the layer blending mode on the top layer, on the background copy layer, in this case, I'm going to choose overlay, but there's lots of different options. You can just click through and see what happens. Um, it affects the way that the background copy interacts with the original background layer. And so you can see that very quickly, I can take kind of what looks like a washed out dull image. I've duplicated it and changed the layer blending mode to overlay, and it kind of makes a color pop. It might be a little bit too saturated, it's kind of blown out now, but it quickly changes the effect of the picture. And all I did was change a layer blending mode on the background copy layer. You can combine layer opacity and layer blending modes to create a more aesthetically pleasing design, right? So the first image might be a little washed out. And the second image where I have duplicated the layer and I have made the um, layer blending mode overlay, it's too blown out. And I can create a happy medium by lowering the opacity on the changed layer, the layer with the overlay opac um, layer blending mode. And I've reduced it to 66%. And now I kind of blend the two images together by affecting how they interact with each other with the layer blending mode on the background copy layer. And then I've lowered the opacity so it lessens the intensity of that change. And it's blending the background copy layer, which is kind of wild and vibrant, with the original layer, which is kind of dull. And when you blend the two together with the opacity, it creates kind of a happy medium between the two. In the next video, I'm going to launch a couple different images and show you a couple different blending modes and opacities that work. But since I, um, I'm going to jump to Photoshop and do an entire demo on that, I think I'm going to talk about layer effects before I do that so that we have a distinction in the videos. This is the slideshow. And then the next video should be our last video showing how to create these effects. And so another thing that you can do when you're working with layers is you can apply layer effects. And in this example, in the slideshow, I just use text so you can see what the effects are. But when I do my next video, I'm going to apply this either to the ice cream cone or to the pink squiggle because layer effects can apply to any layer. So they don't have to be text layers, they don't have to be shape layers, they don't even have to be painted layers. They could be an image that you're applying it to.
To apply a layer effect, you need to select the layer that you would like to apply it to. At the bottom of your layers panel, there is an FX button. If you say it fast, it's FX, so it's the FX panel. If you push and hold that, you can see that there's lots of options, and it really doesn't matter which one you choose, because when you choose any of these options, it's going to launch the layer effects dialog box, so you can just play around and add some effects to your document. And so I have a an artboard that I created here, and it has the word layer effects on it using just a random typeface. If I was to choose bevel and boss, um, the layer styles dialog box would launch, and you can see there's lots of different options over here on the right hand side, and so I just I didn't do anything except for click bevel and emboss and with bevel and emboss selected the right hand side of the panel activates and it shows you the settings and so this is just the default bevel and emboss and I'm not going to go through each item individually because I think one you can click through and you can experiment but also we'll do an entire chapter talking about layer styles and saving styles and presets and layer effects and things like that so some other examples, so on the left hand side here I just put a default drop shadow. You'll notice that I had to uncheck bevel and then I selected drop shadow in order to get the drop shadow option. And the only way that I can see the right hand side um, options that are specific to the drop shadow is if I click the word drop shadow. Right now I could click the little check mark next to outer glow or stroke or bevel and emboss, but until I highlight that row I won't see the options for adjusting that. Um, there's two different drop shadows um, in the version of Photoshop that I'm using and so I click the other drop shadow in this example and I modified it, I changed the color if you click the little little guy here and you can kind of quickly apply these effects. What I like about these effects, they're non-destructive effects and so it's taking whatever's on the layer and it's modifying it in some way but I could always just come back in here and uncheck the, the drop shadow checkbox here and the drop shadow would disappear but I still have all the text for my document. You can see you can do um, outer glows. These are just two different examples of different outer glows. Maybe for some reason this funky effect on the top one works. This is a combination of a bevel and emboss. It's actually called a pillow emboss and an outer stroke. I just clicked them really fast so you could see. But you can experiment with these different options and you can click around and see what they do. And they're just kind of a quick way to apply some uniqueness to your project when you don't have a lot of Photoshop experience yet.